November 22nd, 2019. This is Nerd Bourbon episode 129. I'm Seth Sturgill. And I'm Todd Sturgill. Now, Todd, you really are disgusting. <sighs> see, see, I was wondering if you're going to break... <laughs> I, I was Honestly, you know how I was, I was going to open this? I was going to say I'm Todd, the human garbage disposal Sturgill. <laughs> Boy, howdy. You're, you're, it's, you're something else, you know that? <laughs> you challenged me. Holy moly. You challenged me. I, I don't even understand. You, you you know what you are? You were like the uh, that scene in Spirited Away. <laughs> yes. Where, <laughs> where, where the fucking parents in the very beginning are just gorging themselves. Yeah. At the at like the food market. Mm-hmm. Or you know what? Better yet, you're that you're the no face. Yeah, that, that's actually the scene that I was I was actually originally thinking about when you mentioned Spirited Away. <laughs> you're the no face scene where he just yeah. he's just platters upon platters yeah. of food. Yeah, it's bad, dude. You 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 challenged me. I didn't challenge you. I felt challenged. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have long had to endure your eating noises and your mouth sounds. Our dear <laughs> listeners don't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> what what I have to edit out every week just to mm. save their precious ears. It's not that but bad. It's not that bad when you're just living and existing, but when you're eating, boy howdy, <laughs> is it bad. <laughs> I think you really, commented on my slurping of mac and cheese. I, I just didn't even understand. I'm like, I, I had to stop you because I, like, I was like, dude, like, I don't even understand how you're slurping mac and cheese. Like, I don't get it. It's cheesy. You just... You just eat it. You just bite it. It's you know, cheesy. It. Oh, you, oh, you chew your noodles? I just swallow them all. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he's like, and then he's like, I'm going to put it. He's sitting there eating this mac and cheese for like 15 minutes. I was enjoying it slowly. <laughs> and then you challenged for like, me. For like 15 minutes. And then, then he goes, he goes, I'm going to go put the rest of this in the fridge and eat the rest later. I'm like, wait a minute. You've been sitting here somehow slurping mac and cheese for 15 minutes. You're not even done. <laughs> and that was that. That was there was the challenge. I felt challenged. You were like, "Hold on!" And then I just hear you just like, <laughs> and that's when I said, "Nope." And I turned, I turned you all the way down. And then I just occasionally like would turn the volume up. Well, and then dude, it was just... it wasn't for very long because I I cleared that the rest of that bowl. Pretty quickly, it I just would bad. I would turn it up occasionally to see if it was over. <laughs> it was, dude. It was bad. Like I, I, this is the one of the first times where I was like, at like as I was doing it, I was like, kind of like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> it, it really is disgusting, Todd. I really I, do mean I, that. I, again, I admit that. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly admit that. <laughs> it's not good. I mean, like I, uh, I'm the type of motherfucker that'll sit there and have like a triple meat water burger. But I, I, but I'm not sitting there having sex with my food, <laughs> quite the way that you do. I make it's love bad. to my food. It's bad, bro. It's I make bad. love to my food. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I and look, there. I, I've had to deal with it for a long time, basically my entire life. And sometimes you ask yourself, like, if you could go back in time and like kill baby Todd, would you? Just to just to avoid what you know he would become. You know what I mean? I mean, I'd do it. I'd put myself down. I think I think back to those times where like we would be asleep at Granny's house, and I'm like, I should have just smothered him in his sleep. <laughs> do you still love me, sir? <laughs> if I knew it was going to lead to this day, it's like baby Hitler. <laughs> if I knew it was going to lead to this day. This where, specific day. <laughs> where you're going to engorge yourself on mac and cheese, I would have just put a stop to it. You know I'd what I mean? Ag- I'd do it again. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. You asked me afterwards. You were like, "Do you still love me?" <laughs> yeah. That's like you make it harder and harder every <laughs> passing day. <laughs> it was bad. It was real bad. Well, uh, Todd, berating aside, 
we do have some motherfucking video games to talk about this week. I wanted to preface this episode of Nerd Bourbon by saying a couple things. Um, first of all, we will not be really getting in depth with Pokemon Sword and Shield discussion this week, and there's a good reason for that. Reason A being that Todd has not really played that much of it. Yeah. I think you've played, what, maybe an hour? Yeah, I really just played that, like, uh, the tutorial, and that was, like, really it, and I'm just waiting for my days off. Yeah, now I've played a, a significant amount of the game, but still not enough to where I feel, like, really comfortable having, like, an authoritative discussion about it. The reason for that is because Todd and I have both been really playing a lot of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is going to be the main topic of conversation for this week's episode of the show. And what I want to do is next week, once Todd has had more time to play Pokemon, once I've put more time into Pokemon, we're going to give Pokemon kind of the time it deserves. Maybe we'll talk about like initial impressions this week on the show, but next week is when we'll really kind of marinate on Pokemon and talk about it for a good long while like I imagine we're going to with Fallen Order this yeah. week. So I just wanted to give these games like the limelight they deserve. They are kind of like the last major releases of the year. So I did kind of want, I didn't want to just like cram them both into one episode. So I, uh, we're going to primarily focus on Fallen Order this week. And then next week we'll talk about some Pokemon. Uh, of course, I also just wanted to pimp out the fact that the Mandalorian shots still rolling on strong. Should be a new episode today, every Friday. Continue listening to that. We've been getting some good reception on that, Todd. I don't know if you've been looking at the numbers, but those... I, I actually haven't. I really don't pay attention to them anymore. Those those episodes have been doing well. We've had some positive feedback on the uh, even on the YouTube channel. Uh, oh. People are enjoying our Mandalorian coverage. So Legit. Legit. That, that series will continue on every Friday reliably. I cannot wait to watch episode three tomorrow. Ooh, ooh, I'm tantalized. <laughs> I'm living in I'm living happily in my Star Wars bubble right now, Todd. Don't pop my Star Wars bubble, Todd. <laughs> uh, with that, I think that's a pretty good segue to talk about the main thing that you and I have both been playing this week: Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh yeah. So we're not going to get into spoilers. Don't worry about that. The game's still too fresh, I think, to talk about spoilers. Well, yeah, it definitely is. Game came out like, what, a week ago? <laughs> so yeah. we're not going to get into spoilers, but spoiler free, Todd. What what are your and your thoughts? You you finished the game. Yep. You've you've rolled credits as they say. Yep. What are your thoughts? I want more. It You just want more, huh? It left me wanting more. It, it honestly did leave me wanting more. I, like, I was like, next game, please? But you mean that in a good way. Yeah, definitely a good way. Like, it's, like, I, I really enjoyed the game. There are a lot of people who say that, and they say, like, oh, I just, uh, I wanted oh, yeah, more. I wanted, I wanted more of the... I wanted you know, more. No, no, I, 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 just want, I just want another game, because I'm like, the game was good. Give me the I sequel. want my I want my red lightsaber. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> you will take magenta! And you, <laughs> and you will like it. <laughs> Those fucking idiots. Oh. I want my I want my Sith gear in a fucking game called Jedi. Fucking this shit's so annoying. Like, there's a chance you bought the wrong game, buddy. Right? Yeah. I I already kind of know it's gonna be like pretty high on my top ten at the end of the year. Oh if yeah, I, for sure. I, I say top ten, but my shit might be a top five with the amount of games I've played. <laughs> well, you know, it's been a weak year. Yep. I mean, we, we have continued to talk about that throughout the course of 2019. It has been a, a weird year. It's been one of those weird between years where it's like, okay, we're waiting on new consoles to come out next year. Shit's kind of light now. And then yeah, the other issue I'm having is like the games I was super excited about are just... <laughs> fell flat. <laughs> fell flat as an understatement. Yeah, uh. I feel that. This game, I think, is is definitely a shining light, though. Oh, it definitely of the is. Year. It is certainly one of my favorite games of the year. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go even a step further, Todd. And we'll, we're going to deep dive into this game. We're going to really talk about the things this game does right, the things this game does wrong. I don't think mm. this is a perfect game by any stretch. Oh, God, no. It definitely has issues. If this game 
had a few just and and the fr- the thing that frustrates me the most about this game and I love the game overall but like if this game just had a few little tweaks this would have been a slam dunk game of the year for me mhm slam dunk because all the things that this game does really well right the story I thought was excellent mhm from start to finish I loved the story and that was that was like the last thing I really expected from this game, because I, I was actually talking to you about this today, I had to continuously remind myself, this is Respawn that is doing this game. You know what I mean? Like, this is not a team that is known for storytelling. This is not a team... that This, this team is known for shooters. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is a bunch of, like, ex-Call of Duty developers that made two Titanfall games and Apex Legends before this. And now they're making a Dark Souls, Metroidvania, Star Wars RPG with a really good story. Yep. Like, it's weird. It's a weird trajectory. But I gotta say, and it was another thing I was thinking of as I was playing the game. I was like, wow, like, EA owes so much to Respawn. They saved it. (laughs) Well, not only did they save the fact that, not only did they make categorically the best star wars game under ea's banner i mean for my money fallen order is like a top tier single player star wars game i can't really think of too many games that i like more Mm -hmm. in the single player star wars space than fallen order yeah but it's they, they saved they they kind of renewed faith in ea with that license a little bit and between this and apex I mean, those are the two premier EA releases of the past year. Mm -hmm. And Respawn's responsible for both of them. And it's actually interesting because... I think both of those are going to basically be on my list. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. And it's it's funny, it's interesting. So I was watching... You and I both bought the deluxe edition of the game, and the interesting thing about that is it came with some behind-the-scenes, like, kind of documentaries that you could watch, and I actually watched them today. Um, uh, as I was, uh, like right after I finished the game, that was like the first thing I wanted to do was watch those. Mm-hmm. And I do recommend it. If you did buy the deluxe edition of the game, it, it is worth watching. It's really cool and interesting to see. There's a couple of shots, a couple of moments at star Wars celebration. I was like looking for us in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't see us, but that's funny. We were, we were pretty far off. Yeah. Uh, we, we did not yeah. exactly have front row seats. <laughs> But it it, it was, it was kind of cool to like relive that moment a little bit, all the lightsabers in the crowd and stuff oh, like that. I don't, dude, just being there was so good. Yeah, really cool, really cool mm-hmm. moment. But yeah, watching that, it's actually interesting. Cause something they mentioned early on in the behind the scenes footage is that EA created this team within Respawn, and they were sort of like, hey. Respawn, we want you guys to make a melee-oriented game. And we still don't know exactly what it was, but that team then got reformatted. They they worked on whatever the hell they were working on. They worked on it for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And then after all that development was done, EA approached them and said, hey, do you want to turn this into a Star Wars game? And they did. And it became Fallen Order. But it's just, it's fascinating to me that this didn't even necessarily start out as a Star Wars game. Mm-hmm. And I, I imagine that year and a half was probably spent just focused on really good melee combat, which I think is one of the things that this game absolutely nails. Yeah. Is I think the combat is really solid. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that because I think a really interesting thing with this game is a lot of people have been making the comparisons to this game and Sekiro, which is a game that you famously did not like. And I think the interesting thing to talk about here is like the fact that you came away enjoying Fallen Order's combat so much versus Sekiro. Yep. So why do you think, I mean, we've talked about this off mic, but to elaborate on a little bit more, why do you think this game's combat works and Sekiro's doesn't for you? I personally felt like there were just more options to me personally i don't know like because i just could not get past like a certain point in Sekiro, just because like the, just, the combat just annoyed me it just i just would it god this is gonna turn into me shitting on Sekiro of the podcast <laughs> well i mean that's okay because i mean that's that's uh, the way you feel about it it's 
coming like playing Fallen Order, like I just feel like there's just there's more options. You don't have you're not you you know you're not forced to do the pairing. Is no. it helpful to parry? Of course, but there's other things you can do. You can be smart about breaking down the stamina instead of. I'm assuming you. you mean, you're pretty sure you can do that in Sekiro, but like, what would be the point in Sekiro? Uh, because it's just like this is a, it's a fucking FromSoft game, so you're gonna be getting booty blasted if you don't, if you don't really. But with Fallen Order, to me, like you can. With, there's so many more options with the combat. There's like force slow, where you can slow people down, get behind them, hit them, break down their stamina that way. So. Let me actually, let me actually say the actual like, like the similarities between Sekiro and uh, Fresh yeah, yeah. Out. So the combats bet- between the two are essentially like they're stamina based, and that's you basically break down the stamina. And this is in both games, you break down the stamina to get to a powerful attack, essentially. Mm-hmm. And with this, with Sekiro and Fallen Order, as the stamina breaks, sometimes. I, even Fallen Order, you, I don't know if you realize this, sometimes you don't even do like a powerful attack. It's just to be able to do an attack type shit. Right, just to even break through yeah. it all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sekiro, essentially, though, is like when the stamina bla- uh, fucking uh, breaks. That's just, you just get the death blow, you know? Right. But that's 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 the similarities. Like, it's really just the stamina-based, like, combat to get the hit. And that's really where the similarities, like, end for me, personally. Uh-huh. Because, again, there's just... I think Sekiro is primarily parry based. From uh, Fallen Order is it's helpful, you know. I just don't feel like you need to do it. Like half the time, it got to the point where like I really didn't parry very often. Uh, the only time I really parried is like when I was like fighting like fucking mobs, like where mm. I was like, let me just kill these motherfuckers quick. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing, obviously, with uh, Fallen Order is there's different. I mean, is that, is that a spoiler? If I bring out the uh, talk about like the different moves, um, I don't think so. I, here's the thing about this game. I mean, this game does have like force abilities, but I don't think any of them are like super like. I was I talking mean, more so the uh, the saber shit. I wouldn't talk about that. Yeah. That okay. I, I now they have officially revealed some of that stuff. Yeah. But I still would tread lightly. Yeah. So vaguely. You can do some cool shit. <laughs> they, I'll say this. They, even though this game is like it's a Star Wars game, it's a game where you play as a Jedi. They still give you like, yeah, it's lightsaber combat, but there are still there is still something to be said about weapon variety mm-hmm. in the game. Uh, that's a I'll good say way. That. No, that's the, that's a good way to say it. There's a good combination of saber combat mixed in with like force combat. Yeah, and. There's a lot of stuff that you could really end up doing, like you just get one shot kills with like the combination of said, you know, yeah, like big force time. and lightsaber shit. There's a lot of combinations that I didn't even like really fuck with, and I remember seeing them do it in like the E3 stuff. I completely forgot about it, like the good old like doing dumb shit with like force slow. Oh, I did that. There's actually a trophy for doing that. Oh god. So I, I, I did do that. I forgot about it. I did do something where I like there was a guy shooting a rocket at me. I slowed the rocket down and I pulled him into it. I do that shit all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll often just like if they go to shoot a rocket at me, I'll just push that shit right back at them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah. no you no. <laughs> yeah, basically yeah. There are a lot more. You're right. There there's a lot more variety, and it's also not just melee combat because there there are. I mean, you know, the primary antagonists of this game. There are, like, it's Star Wars, so there are aliens and monstrous creatures and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But there's also a lot of just, like, stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of folks that are shooting at you from a range. And that turns into the good old deflection. Yeah, you know, so there's there's all of that, and pairing is, is a major part of that as well. But And then, like, you, you know, you have different... The, the thing that this game does really well is it's got a good enemy variety... Mm. But it doesn't overreach, I don't think. Like, it, it does just enough to shake it up. Where, like, with the Stormtroopers, right? Mm-hmm. The second you get used to just dealing with the standard shock baton Stormtroopers and the mm-hmm. standard, like, range blaster Stormtroopers, okay, we're going to mix in the flamethrower guys, which are fucking annoying. Oh, my God, they're annoying. 
And then it's like, okay, you just got used to them. We're going to mix in like the security droids, Mm -hmm. which are like big tanks that you kind of have to prioritize. And it's interesting because the way the game sets up its combat scenarios, it's very similar to Dark Souls, where it's almost like chess, which, Mm -hmm. you know, when when you're playing a Souls game, you enter a combat scenario and you see like enemy types. You're like, okay, what's my strategy going to be here? That's something I really loved about Fallen Order's combat. Like, I had yeah. to think about who I was going to take down first. Yeah, yeah. Shit, if a security droid was in there, that motherfucker's going down first. Uh- <laughs> yeah, because they, they are very dangerous, and they take a lot of hits. So it's mm-hmm. like, cool, you're my priority. Yep. And then it's also, there are often times where you're, you've got a lot of, like, motherfuckers, especially towards the end of the game. Holy shit. Yeah, they start, they start shitting out a lot of dudes. You start getting into big combat scenarios, but you enter these situations and you kind of like play that mental chess in your head where you're like, okay, how am I gonna how am I gonna handle this? And and the game is really good about that. I think I think this game did a lot of really good things with its combat. And it's it's funny because I did see people making that Sekiro comparison a lot. And to me, and I haven't played Sekiro, I want to. And I, I that is actually one of the few games that I'm gonna be looking for this Black Friday. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping to find a good deal on that, pick that up and play it. But it's one of those things where, for me, I'm like, yeah, I could already see, not even having played it, that Fallen Order has a lot more variety to its combat, a lot more depth, a lot more, like you said, options. Where, (sighs) yeah, parrying is a thing. Yeah. But you don't got to do it. Not You could probably, especially if you played on an easier difficulty, like, you could could probably pretty well button mash your way through See, that's, that's actually something i was going to bring up is Sekiro. you probably can play that game without pairing but it's like why the fuck would you why like why the fuck would you put yourself through that it seems like it's a much much more major part of that game's design that's, that's my thing i'm no longer the masochist that i used to be when it comes to like the fucking playing the souls games and shit like i'm just i'm too old i don't give a shit <laughs> yeah i don't give a fuck yeah yeah, you're not playing on like new game plus 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 plus. Oh plus fuck anymore. no, dude. That's too old for that shit. Too yeah. too tired. <laughs> <laughs> Fallen Order. Another thing that I really respect about this game and its difficulty setting. So I played most of the game on the Jedi Master difficulty. Uh, I will say this: Jedi Master is more than likely the way that game should be played. I I agree with that. It's basically the second hardest difficulty. I'll say that I think the parry times are just right yes. with uh, Jedi Master. Yes, exactly. So that's the that's the cool thing about it. So they, they give you a very like stark breakdown of exactly what the different difficulty settings are, and they tell you like exactly what is adjusted. Mm-hmm. So like when you look at the story mode difficulty, basically, your parry times are, like, ridiculous. It's like, like the whole bar is all the way up. The, yeah, the bar is yeah. completely maxed. It's like you can sit there and, like, block. Like, you probably sit there and actually dead ass throw your block out. And just always wait, be parrying. Like, like, wait, like, three seconds and still get a parry or some shit. Yeah, it's, it's, like, ridiculous. And then you can see, like, how the enemy damage and enemy aggression is, like, really, really low. It's, like, the fucking first notch, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, and that stuff just kind of slowly adjusts to where, like, eventually when you get to, like, the Jedi Grandmaster, which I think that's for people who are really, like, trying to push themselves. Yeah, trying to go, trying to, that's the, that's the go fuck yourself. Uh, uh, that's where, where the, it's, like, parry time is, like, a notch. It's, like, barely and, uh, on there. Yeah. You gotta be very precise. And that's, I'm not trying to do that shit. I'm not trying to, like, because <sighs> it just doesn't sound fun to me anymore. <laughs> No, but I think if you, I, I seriously, I, I do think that if you are a Souls veteran, I would say maybe start the game on the middle, the normal, like, Jedi Knight just to get a feel for it, but then I think you're safe to crank it up to Jedi Master. Yeah, that's that's essentially what I, I, I basically yeah. did. It's like, let me get a feel for the combat first and then kind of fuck around with it. And the nice thing that this game does, too, is it does not penalize you at all for adjusting difficulty. This is actually mm-hmm. one of the few games... That I they handled the difficulty I think so well in this game that this was one of the few games where I actually did routinely adjust the difficulty depending on yeah, situations. Yeah, adju- adjusted for the situation because I think there was a couple like bosses. Yeah, there I were two bosses like, yeah. that made me knock it down and then knock it back up after I beat them. But it was like it was like man like that that is not normally something that I fuck with in a video game. 
I mean, but this game just handled difficulty so well that it made it so easy for me to do that. I yeah. loved that. Yeah. So combat, really, really strong. I think one of the game's highlights, certainly. Definitely. Definitely. Um, enemy variety, like I said, is very strong throughout the games. You know, the game. I, I don't think it's a spoiler to say spans multiple planets and stuff. And what? No, I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> Uh, there's certainly certainly a lot to see and do, but I, I also I wanted to talk about, and this is before we get into the negatives, I mean, one of the other highlights, as I alluded to earlier, really was the story yeah. of the game, and Cal is a character, and I've heard a lot of people, like, when they first start the game, they're like, oh, Cal's like such a vanilla, um, like, boring protagonist. But by the end, I really came around to him. No, that's that's essentially how I was. I was like, I think even, I think like earlier on in the game, I was like, like when I was playing and I was talking to you, I'm like, so how do you feel about him? Yeah. And But I'll, there's a point. There's a point in the game where I like, I really like kind of fell in love with him. Like, you know, like I really, I really enjoy his character. Shit, I like all the characters in the fucking game. I was just going to say, and the supporting cast is also so good. The game really, when you stop and think about it, the game probably has less than ten characters. You know what's funny? Is is a character that comes in later and she's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know who you're talking about. She's yeah, really good. She's great. Like <laughs> And there's again, there's just like there's not very many characters in the game. And I think because I I really love that. I really love that they didn't overreach. They didn't make just like a shit ton of like characters and just try to like make you enjoy all of them so but the the few that you do have are all really really strong yeah. i think yeah i really liked like the base members of your crew and stuff i i and yeah like you said about cal i think that's a part of like his journey one of the things they were saying in the doc in the behind the scenes documentary i was watching is like when you have a game called jedi and you're dealing with star wars you mm -hmm. have to earn that you know yeah. what i mean and that's something that I think they really nailed with this game is earning that title of Jedi. Yeah. Like, you really do feel like uh, you, you started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> well, <laughs> that that's, another, that's another thing. I actually respected the way that they brought in the abilities, actually. Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I feel like they handled that really well. Because essentially, so the, the base premise of the game, for those that don't know, this is not a spoiler, this is just literally the base synopsis of the game setup is that Cal Kestis, the player character, is a surviving Padawan after the events of Order 66. So he is one of the last, like, remaining, the, the, one of the few survivors of the mm -hmm. Jedi Order, and he was just a Padawan when it happened. Mm -hmm. So, and then even despite all of that, sort of his PTSD and his, like, conflicting feelings about the events of all of that yeah, yeah. sort of severed his connection to the Force. So, yeah, it's it's a very, and I, I name dropped this earlier, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, but the game is at heart also a Metroidvania. Mm -hmm. And a big part of Metroidvanias is slowly unlocking abilities that allow you to explore yeah. more and stuff like that. And that's a big major part of this game. And so the way they handle that, like you were saying, is as your connection to the Force is healed. Mm-hmm. You, you get more and more and you get more and more of his backstory and you start to care about Cal and enjoy him as a character more and more mm -hmm. throughout the course of the game to where, yeah, eventually by the game's end, you really do feel like you've like you've seen Cal become a Jedi, yep. you know, and come into his own as a character. And I really, really liked that a lot. I mean, the basic setup of the game is actually really simple and the plot twists, I think, are a little bit weak and predictable. Yeah, that's yeah. But everything around it is so good that I almost don't care about that. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously something that's a huge spoiler that I won't talk about that happens at the end that kind of annoyed me. But other than that, again, those things I can completely forgive because of the way the, that everything else yeah. is handled. Yeah, I, I really, and especially the opening of the game is so strong. Oh. And like even you were talking about like there are scenes of this there are scenes in this game that like really they'll get you emotional. Yes. And there there are some like really stellar knockout moments in this game. I'm that are gonna be like water cooler moments. 
I, I speak. I'm gonna let's bring this to. If you're playing this game, please do not turn the music off. Oh no, the Just music's don't turn great. The fucking music. Like there, like there are moments that are tied together because of that music. Well, Oof. not only is the so like it's a Star Wars game and it's an official in canon Star Wars game. So like there are moments where the official like like the movie score comes in mm-hmm. in some points, and I won't mm-hmm. spoil those moments, of course. Mm-hmm. But orgasmic, yeah. But there, but there's also like several like uh, bits of original music that I think are also oh, really yeah. good. Yeah. So I, I really like the game soundtrack. I think it totally fits in with Star Wars. I really liked the the main story beats and stuff like that. Now, where I think the game has some major major problems is in its Metroidvania kind of DNA. Yes. This is where the game really starts to show some blemishes for me. And this is what ultimately knocks the game down a few pegs because we we've been sitting here just like jerking it off for the past like 20 minutes and we've <laughs> we, we love the game, but like there are some significant issues with it. So the two big takeaways from this game, the two biggest parts of this game's DNA, I think it's safe to say is Dark Souls and, like, Metroidvania. Yeah. Dark Souls is obvious from the combat, also from the sort of, like, level structure, the way that things are integrated, the levels all are interconnected with, like, shortcuts and uh, meditation points, a.k.a. bonfires, <laughs> you know, littered throughout the game. Um, and, you know, there's there's also the typical, like, if you die, you go back to your attacker to get your health and your experience back. And I do... I do like that though, because at least you only got to hit him once. Yeah, although it does annoy me how it like slows down. That's my only problem with that that mechanic. That was dumb. I was like, that, I, that's defi- that actually it's fucked definitely, me up. It's definitely gotten me hit before. Yeah, because of it. yeah, big time. And and then also, it's the whole thing. Like if you if you choose to stop and rest, you can recover your stim packs, aka Estus flasks, <laughs> but it'll respawn all the enemies in the world and stuff like that. So. Very much wearing the Dark Souls thing on its sleeve. But then there's a big element of Metroidvania exploration where there are certain things you're going to have to backtrack to planets with abilities that uh, will allow you to access areas of the planet you could not access before. Tons of secrets and collectibles and stuff to find. And that's all great. But there are a couple of minor, easily fixable design annoyances that really bummed me out about this because now you know we've both finished the game at this point mm-hmm. and now i'm kind of like going through because i am going to platinum the game and i'm going through and i'm 100 percenting these planets and finding everything and like there's no way to teleport between no. the different meditation points you are legitimately walking you have to hoof it well, it's bad through it's the whole planet and there were a couple times even for me where like there was a moment on one of the planets where I accidentally like kind of fell into like a lower level of the planet. Oh fuck. And I was like, "Oh my god, I have to hoof it all the way back up to where I was." There's no way to teleport. And that's that's something the Dark Souls learned early on where they have the uh the homeward bones, right? Yeah, homeward like homeward bones that like allow you to like uh, travel back to your last rested bonfire. See, yeah. I'd take just that. Like, yeah, just even just that would go be back amazing. To the last, like the last rested one. Even that would be amazing. Uh, and such a big. I mean, this sounds like a nitpicky thing, but you don't understand how big of a difference that would make if they if they included that. How much more enjoyable it would be to explore these areas. I also think there's little quality of life things. So, like there's the hollow map that uh, that BD one has. And I think the hollow map is overall pretty good when you get used to it. It does some things that I really like. Mm -hmm. I like that it shows you the areas you have not gone yet. I like that it shows you the kind of... It's actually quite smart. It shows you... It doesn't reveal the scope of the area you haven't been to, but it shows you a pathway you have not gone down yet. right? And it shows you if you're even able to go down it or not. So I think that's actually really smart. But then there's... Where it starts to get messy is like when you're having to do the different levels and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it gets a little too. That's where it does. I feel like it's congested a little too much. It's like you don't know exactly what the fuck you're looking at. 
Yeah, I'm like flipping through the different levels and stuff. And what I mentioned this to you as I was playing, I was like, God, it would have been so good if I could have like placed a waypoint on the map and like oh. had had the game draw me like a path or something. That would have been so good. I don't mean like in the overall. I'm just saying on the map, it would have been really cool if the game could have like drawn me a little bit of a path or something like that. And I think if somebody from Respawn were listening to this conversation now, they were prob they probably did think about teleporting between meditation points and then couldn't think of a good lore reason for it. But I almost don't even think you even need one. I mean, maybe they were kind of scared about that because this is Star Wars and you have to take that shit seriously. Yeah. Because if all of a sudden Cal Kestis can teleport... <laughs> Like he's too powerful. There no. has to be well, there has to be yeah, a lore explanation for it, right? He's using force teleport. But I just think <laughs> that there there's a way. Like you could have thought of a way. You know what I mean? Even if it's like something as simple as like you know, a like a smaller kind of like shuttle that is attached to the mantis or something like that, like there's a way. <laughs> you could think of something. Just for the for the sheer quality of life alone. You could think of something, because God damn it, it would have made exploration so much more enjoyable. But the, those are like some design annoyances that really are quite frustrating to me. I, another thing I wanted to talk about in terms of negatives with the game is I think the game could have used a little more spit and polish. Mm, definitely. There is some frame rate issues. Frame rate issues. Um, I definitely saw a little bit of framiness. You can sort of... You can kind of, if you're playing on a PS4 Pro, you can kind of get into like a performance mode that helps with that a little bit, locks your uh, locks your resolution at 1080p and improves your performance and blah, blah, blah. That's cool. But I also just like, there, there's been several situations where, especially as you have more movement abilities at the end of the game, where I'm like, I'm blazing through these planets and... And I'm literally going faster than the game can load. Yep, yep. I had a situation where I was on one of the planets just recently. And I was doing a jump onto a ledge. And the game had not loaded that ledge yet. And so I just <laughs> fell infinitely. <laughs> and because there's no like homeward bone or anything like that. like I fell infinitely and the game wasn't killing me because it thought that i was on that ledge but the ledge wasn't there so i had to just hard quit the game and completely reload so yeah that that so, happened a couple times one of my favorite uh things i ran into is uh so there was a chest that i had to splice open yeah and uh i got hit by an enemy and the chest was already spliced but i could not open it Oh, so I had to, I, I was able to, so I hard quit, came back and I could just re-splice it and then open it. Okay. But, but it was like, it was some dumb shit. I was like, I was like, are you serious? Are I you have serious heard, right I have heard some horror stories from people who actually, and there's little things where the game will, I'm not going to get into specifics for the sake of spoilers, but there are things that the game there are moments where the game like doesn't signpost very well mm -hmm. you don't know exactly sometimes where it is you need to go i didn't have a major problem with that but some people actually found ways accidentally to get to points where they were not supposed to get to what and the game fucked them for it so oh dude you gotta tell me about that later uh, maybe off recording i'll say this vaguely i'll say this vaguely for you so there's a moment in the game where there's a certain jumping ability that you need it to access this part of the game, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, there were a lot of people that didn't know that because the game doesn't necessarily telegraph it that well. It does if you fail, but there are some people who are able to just make the jump anyway. They found ways to just make the jump even though they weren't supposed to. And when they got up there, the game just didn't know what to do. <laughs> so so like they just were fucked and and there is no official response from ea or respawn about it other than oh we're working on it and those those people just had to completely restart the game wow 
So that's just one example. There are a couple of horror stories that I've heard from people like that where they were able to access areas that they otherwise were not supposed to be able to. And the game just basically hard crashes and you just can't do anything. You just completely have to restart like your entire save file. So the game is not in an amazing technical state i think it's completely playable i think it is completely possible i did not have any major 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 issues like that yeah i didn't have some like game breaking shit yeah nothing broke my game but i'm just saying the game could have used a little more time in the oven and i understand there it's between a rock and a hard place right because what are they gonna do push it a few months release it in the clusterfuck that next spring is Mm mm-hmm Release it next to fucking Animal Crossing and Doom and Cyberpunk and Final Fantasy Remake. Like, they can't do that. And then what what else are they going to do? Not have something for the holiday? Mm -hmm. They can't hold on to it until next summer. So, this was the best case scenario for them, and I understand that. And I give them a little bit of a free pass because of that. Um, But, you know, it it is what it is. But I, I think all of these things add up to really knock the game down a few pegs for me to where I'm like, man, between the polishing issues and between the little minor design things that really detract a lot from the overall experience, this game could have been a slam dunk game of the year for me. Mm -hmm. As it stands, it's merely amazing. (laughs) It's merely amazing. It's mere. It's, it's like, it's like merely fantastic. It's, it's like right there. It's it could have been like it could have been a ten. You know what I mean? It's just it's no. Uh, it's merely it's, a nine point five. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Another thing, just just real quick, as I as I feel like we're kind of wrapping up this discussion a little bit. Another thing that I really love is the way the collectibles are handled in the game. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because this game does something that I don't know that I don't know why more games don't just do it like this, where none of the chests in the game contain bullshit. It's all good. It's all shit you want. It's all stuff involving customization of your either your outfits for Cal, your skins for BD one, or customization elements of your lightsaber. And the ship. And the ship, yeah. So it's all it's all shit that you want. So that's all great. The secrets, the upgrades to your life and your force ability and stuff like that. The echoes that provide interesting like codec entries that you can read or, or listen to. It's really, really cool. All of it is really, really cool. And by the way, we, I feel like we need to talk about the customizable lightsaber. Oh, come on. Making your own lightsaber in this game? It's nice. It's awesome. They know what they were doing. Oh, and they they did that real filthy shit. Oh uh, no! Where yeah. they <laughs> that real they that real good synergy? They <laughs> they're like, hey, let me just let me just tap into your wallet real quick and basically give you the options. You can literally take a lightsaber, like all the same components that are available at Galaxy's Edge are in the game. So you yeah, could make. Hurt. I feel like I'm using one of those too, like a piece of it. I'm using a couple pieces to it. Mine's a little bit of a, like a mishmash of a bunch of different shit. Yeah, so is mine. Mine's uh, yeah. I definitely got the elemental nature one though. Yeah, I do have a couple pieces of that on there, and it's just funny because I'm just like you bastards know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> you're just making me want to go to Galaxy's Edge. Like motherfuckers, more. you know I'm gonna give you guys your, give you money soon. I want to. I'm gonna go there. Get my lightsaber, man. Please, please. But yeah, I just there there are just so many. This game does a lot of things right. I think it stumbles in a lot of areas. I, I think I was telling you, this game is trying to be like a jack of all trades kind of thing, mixing a lot of elements of a lot of different games and not quite nailing all of them. But overall, I I, I think this is such a great like first effort in this space from Respawn. Again, these are shooter guys. You know what I mean? These these guys don't make games like this. So as a first effort, really, really strong, I think. And certainly one of the best games of the year. Oh, man. I want to talk real quick before we wrap up this Fall in Order conversation and move on to some news. The good uh, synergistic moments with, like, Clone Wars shit. 
mm. and like expanded universe kind of like yeah. yeah if you're a fan of like the clone wars and rebels and stuff like that and if you if you're nerdy about like star wars lore there's some fat for you to chew on in this game. Yeah, you'll you'll, you'll pick up on pick up on some shit. You'll pick you'll up on it. some good shit. I I think there's I, I don't think you have to have done that. I don't think you have to have watched like Clone Wars and Rebels to enjoy the game. But if you know, like if if you're in the know, if you're if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan, there's a lot to love about this game. I will say that. Anyway. Is there anything you think we're missing? You think we need to talk about anything I, else? Other than if we just said fuck it and went full spoilers? No. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go full spoilers. I could see us maybe one day in the future maybe do a special episode where we talk about spoilers or something. We've we, we've talked about doing that before with other games. We never do. <laughs> we never do, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, I'll we'll call see. you out on your bullshit right now. <laughs> we talked about doing it for, I think, God of War. And yeah, just we never, never did. got never around came, to it. Never came back to it. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to promise anything. You know but... what? Speaking of, so God of War. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into a full spoiler discussion about God of War. But no, Jedi Fallen Order, really, really good. Certainly one of the best games of the year. Worth your time if you're a Star Wars fan, I think, for sure. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it, gets, it gets the nerd bourbon seal of approval despite its flaws. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Anyway, Todd, are you ready... With that being said and done, to move into the news. I guess no. <laughs> Are you ready to move into a news-oriented direction? Yes. Todd, I have for you this week, I've got a platter prepared for you. We've already talked about the way you eat your food, so I'm ready for you to consume this news in a similar fashion. My throat is open. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Let's. I'm just going to clip that and put that on Craigslist. Um, <laughs> my throat is so <laughs> uh, I've got some delicious juicy NPD data for you Todd for the month of October Ooh. we always like covering that on the show NPD data is always interesting so let's talk about October's NPD data Todd let's push up our glasses and just really uh, dig into the numbers so hardware sales continue to decline in October down 41% from last year. And this is not unexpected. As I said earlier in the show, we are kind of in that weird in-between time where people aren't super going out and buying consoles right now because new consoles are just around the corner and everybody knows it, right? So people aren't necessarily rushing out to buy PS4s and Xbox Ones. Uh, and as, as a result, the only console that has managed to see sales gains is the Nintendo Switch, which is the best-selling hardware for the year and has been the best-selling hardware month over month uh, for every month in 2019. So I'm going to be curious to see next month's NPD like because November is going to be kind of interesting thanks to Black Friday sales. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, Nintendo's Black Friday offerings are pretty shitty. So I'm kind of curious to see if more people are going to be grabbing PS4s and Xbox Ones for Black Friday, and November's NPD may reflect that. And of course, next holiday is going to be a very different story indeed when the new consoles come out. So, We've got the top 10 best-selling games of the month of October, Todd, and those are in order. Number one, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. What? Surprise, surprise. Number two, The Outer Worlds. Number three, Luigi's Mansion 3. Number four, Madden NFL 20. Number five, NBA 2K20. Number six, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Number seven, WWE 2K20. Number eight, FIFA 20. Number nine, Borderlands 3. And number 10, Ring Fit Adventure. So, few things to look at here. It's funny, as I bought that, actually. I still haven't played it. What's that, Ring Fit? Yeah. Did you really buy that? I did. I didn't know that. Yeah, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> you gotta crack that bitch open. <laughs> I gotta know how it is, because I'm actually curious about it. I want to play I, it. I, that's, that's the main reason I bought it. I was, I was curious. I didn't even realize you bought that. That's awesome. So I'm surprised that it charted. I'm surprised that it made it to the top ten. That's really cool to see. But, so, unsurprisingly, Modern Warfare number one, continuing the Call of Duty franchise's 12-year streak of being the best-selling game of its release month, uh, the game is also already the best-selling game of the year. 
Yep. Surprise, surprise. Here's something interesting, though, Todd. So Luigi's Mansion 3. It's interesting that Luigi's Mansion 3 is at number 3 here. And it's interesting for a couple of reasons. So it should be noted that Nintendo does not provide NPD with digital sales data. So when you see a first-party Nintendo game on these lists, it is only based on its physical sales. So I wonder where it would be with the... Yeah, if they included digital sales. I wonder if it would be... Yeah, I wonder if it would be actually above the Outer Worlds. That's totally possible. And you also have to consider that it's number three despite the fact that it released on the very last day of October. Mm -hmm. So it it literally released on October 31st. So it'll be interesting to see how much the game continues to sell like into November. I'm going to be curious to see the drop off or the increase next month. Uh, The Outer Worlds is similarly interesting because it's unclear if NPD is including the downloads of the game via Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, the game was made available on Game Pass from launch day. So I don't know if they're including that or not. If we're talking about just raw sales, I would be kind of shocked if that's Outer Worlds... Yeah, that's... I kind of feel like they have to be including Game Pass downloads here. But uh, who knows? I'm not sure. So either way, they've got to be happy about the performance of that game. Cool to see that game doing well, because that's another of my favorites of the year. So the top 10, the top 10 best-selling games of 2019 so far are in order. Number one, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Mm-hmm. Number two, NBA 2K20. Number three, Madden NFL 20. Ah, uh, yes, the Holy Trinity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just goes to show you, the uh, Call of Duty and sports games, categorically the best-selling well, games of the year. Again, that's that's that right there is the Holy Casual Trinity. You know what I mean? <laughs> People, but, but look, those are the motherfuckers that are spending money, dude. Uh, no, exactly. I worked in video game retail for like six years. You would see people that would literally only come in once a year when those games come out. Like, year after year. Mm -hmm. Number four, Borderlands 3. Number five, Mortal Kombat 11. Number six, Kingdom Hearts 3. Still hanging in there. Number seven, Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Number eight, Anthem. Still hanging in there. Number 9, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Number 10, Grand Theft Auto 5. The game that that won't stop giving. <laughs> so, interesting. I wonder if next month is going to be the month where Anthem finally gets knocked off. With, like, Star Wars and Pokemon, those games are both certainly going to chart. I wonder yeah. if Anthem's finally going to get knocked off next month. It can't end the year on the top 10, Todd. It simply can't. <laughs> We, it's been on the top 10. That game came out in what? February? Yeah. I mean, look, that game has its issues, but I'll be damned. Did I I read some shit about like they're trying on an overhaul. Todd, that is an amazing segue. You're welcome. Because we've got some Bioware <laughs> talk here. <laughs> so it's, so let's let's talk about that. So, I want to talk about Bioware in general because we've actually got a couple of little bits of Bioware news here. Uh, Anthem being among them, as you mentioned. Uh, In spite of recent controversy, it sounds like movement is happening over there at Bioware. We shit on them a lot, but they are very much still working over there. Uh, We know that Bioware is in early development on Dragon Age 4, but Jason Schreier over at Kotaku reports that the studio is also beginning development on a new Mass Effect game. So, not much is known about this, but it is interesting. Mass Effect die. (laughs) Well... We sort of assume that it did die after Andromeda, right? So it's it's interesting to know that EA is kind of returning to Mass Effect after the disappointing commercial and critical reception of Andromeda. Which, to be honest, Andromeda is a game that still like feels like a little bit of a fever dream to me. <laughs> I kind of forget that that game exists. <laughs> like, How far did you get into that game? I played that game for like 15 hours. And like, I just it just wasn't good. It was the it was the Dragon Amaz- Age. I'm amazed you I'm amazed you played 15 hours of it. I played it for a good long time. Nobody wanted to love that game more than me, Todd. Games there there's a handful of games that I, I know that I've basically spent an hour in or less. It's And that's one of them. Andromeda's one. Assassin's Creed Unity was another. 
Yeah, I didn't play much Unity either. Fuck Unity. No, <laughs> but continue. It's, it just... It was one of those things where it, it took me... I was in denial about it for a long time when I was playing Andromeda, but then, like, I, I started to realize, yeah, they 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 Dragon Age Inquisitioned Andromeda, and I'm good on that. So, uh, this news is actually interesting, the, the kind of, like, news that they're kind of beginning development on a new Mass Effect game. It's interesting because there have been recent statements by EA in regards to them actively working on HD remasters for their franchises. So I'm kind of wondering... Maybe an HD re-release of the original Mass Effect trilogy is finally going to ha- uh, happen. How about, uh, I'm sick of uh, remasters. You, you'd buy it. I would. I'd buy it. I would, and I'd actually play 3 finally. If you remaster the Mass Effect trilogy and the Dead Space trilogy, you just earned $120 from me. Just saying. Shit. <laughs> you, you earned my money for both of those games. I would be there on day one for both of those games. Sorry. So, that's just easy money. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet, frankly. So, but yeah, moving in that Anthem direction, that is not all that's happening with Bioware. So, Jason continues in reporting that they're working on a complete overhaul to Anthem. Anthem, of course, was kind of a major disappointment for fans, but has still managed to somehow be one of the best-selling games of the year. Uh, Internal sources are referring to this update as Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next. And uh, it sounds like it's in the early planning phases, with Bioware debating on if they want to deliver updates piecemeal, like No Man's Sky, or release a giant game-changing update like Destiny's Taken King expansion. What do you think they should do there? You think they should just, like, release... Let's go balls to the wall. Just get to do a big old update. Just a big old update to just completely... Just get it, get it, just get it all done. Do you, th- do you think that's a dangerous game, though? Because, like, the longer they wait... To start changing the game. It's already fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that, but they've, they've made their money on it, dude. You know? And they're now they're trying to save it to get more. I mean, I gotta respect the fact that they're even trying to save it at all. Here's the thing. That game is fun to play. Yeah. Not a good game, but it's fun to play. <laughs> Look, it, it sounds like they're kind of all hands on deck with it either way. Whatever yeah. skeleton crew they have working on Anthem... Oh. It's the skeleton crew uh, with their own shovels to dig their own graves. Well, the, the skeleton crew is working hard over there. They're they're gonna try to fix it, Todd. Could you see yourself if you if you wake up one morning and you read on Kotaku, hey, big old anthem update, completely changing the game, Taken King style. I mean, I'd be interested. I'd be interested, honestly, just just check it out for the hell of it. You would jump in. I I say that, but. Then I'm like, I don't. That's another one of those games you need somebody to play with. Well, here's the deal. Know, like that. That's friends. what I'm no, kind of hoping for. I want them to fix it, because I want to play it. Like I want to play it, and the game is so ridiculously cheap now. You know, I'm. I'm like, I, I would be all over it if they fix the game. I'll be all over it. So we'll see. Sounds like free real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Uh, Todd, the first of four downloadable expansions for Borderlands Three has been revealed. Did you see this? I saw one thing. I saw an image. Oh, so you didn't watch the trailer? I didn't know. I didn't watch the trailer. What was in the image that you saw? Uh, it was the Moxie's uh, Handsome Jackpot shit. Yeah, yeah. It is called Moxie's Heist of the Handsome Jackpot. And it's coming no. on December 19th. <sighs> we don't need more Handsome Jack. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what the what the angle is going to be here. I mean, it looks like the setup is that Moxie has put together a team to pull off a heist in Handsome Jack's casino. And it seems like it is just going to be kind of a way for them to shoehorn more Handsome Jack into the game. You bastards. Because, like, we see in the trailer a shot of, like, a big holographic Handsome Jack. Of course, not implying that he's, like, alive or whatever, but it's probably, like... You know, like, leftover, like, hologram shit. You know, that's just active at his casino. Just more reasons to get more Handsome Jack dialogue. That's probably what that's going to boil down to. Are you going to check it out? Maybe. I want to go back to that game. I want to see what that game is like now. I want to see if they've fixed it. Because I'll say this. I do turn on my PS4 every now and then and see that there's been some patches. And I'm like, maybe... Maybe. 
One day. A hope. A chance. Chance. (laughs) (laughs) So that's happening December 19th. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like you and I own it. We might as well check it out. Yeah, fuck. True. I never even hit level cap in that game, Todd. Same. Same. Who the fuck you tell him? Maybe that'll be once once the dust settles with like Fallen Order and Pokemon. Maybe that'll be something. Maybe that'll be a good December game. Play some more Borderlands. I don't maybe. know. Maybe we'll see. Doubt it. I was <laughs> talking. Shit. The big announcement that happened this week, actually, that delayed our recording session for the podcast because I wanted to be able to talk about it, is a new Half Life game, Todd. This is exciting. What year is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this was revealed this week. Uh, although it isn't the one everybody wants, you know it's not Half Life Three. Valve does not count to three. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. They count to they'll Alex. Make a, they'll make a they'll make a new fucking game. You pieces of shit. <laughs> they will not count to three. They will count to Alex, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so Half Life Alex, uh, it is a prequel game set between the events of Half Life One and Two is built from the ground up with their new Source 2 engine, which that alone is actually really exciting to yeah. see that because Lord knows they've been running off that original Source engine for forever. Yep. Since Half-Life 2. So, I mean, they built, you know, the Portal games, the Left 4 Dead games, all in that original engine. So maybe now, i got to be honest with you, this gives me a little a bit hope, of hope. A that, chance. Yeah, Maybe. <laughs> Maybe now that Source 2 is an actual thing that they have a game running in, maybe that that engine exists now, maybe Valve will start making video games again. Who knows? What? No, was... But they built this one from the ground up as a flagship title for their Valve Index Virtual Reality Unit. Although, Valve has confirmed that the game will be compatible with other PC-based VR headsets. It is definitely modeled for their proprietary valve index or whatever it's called no is is that a thing you know i didn't even know valve had their own thing so here's the interesting thing about it so they have their it's a headset but it also has a a set of controllers and the interesting thing is the the controllers track your finger movements Ooh, like your individual finger movements and one of the things about this a major gameplay mechanic of half-life alex and you saw this in the trailer, there's going to be these things called the gravity gloves that will take advantage of your individual finger movements. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds cool. I, I'm very intrigued by that. And the trailer, I gotta tell you, Todd, it just felt good to watch that trailer. It did. To get back into that world, to see that... To, to shit your pants seeing a VR head crab jump at you? Yeah, that's the first thing I commented. I'm like, I'm not I'm not a fan of that. It's like, holy not shit. A, not a fan. That's, Could that's, you imagine? That's terrifying. VR head crabs? Are, I mean, what, oh. Can I imagine myself shitting my pants? <laughs> Hell no. But it's, it's cool to see a game actually take advantage. I think they did make like a little mini like Aperture Labs portal game for the Valve Index or whatever. A very like short kind of experience, but I think that until now, I think that's been the only thing that's taken advantage of that technology. So cool to see them working on something. Cool to get back into the Half Life universe. I've got the game's official description here. It reads, quote, Alex Vance and her father Eli secretly mount the resistance to the brutal occupation of Earth by a mysterious alien race known as the Combine. As Alex, players will take the fight to the Combine to save the future of humanity, end quote. Did you see how much the Valve Index is? Oh, I don't, I don't even want to know. Fuck. Several hundred, I'm sure. So, oof. In addition to the monstrous PC you need to run this shit. My, my PC probably could run it. Probably on low settings. <laughs> but dude, this is bad, bro. Just the, just the fucking... So just the... They have it just with the headset here, like 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. Not even with the controllers, bro. With the controllers, probably like 700 The con- Yeah, the controllers are about like 280 Jesus Christ. Fuck. Yeah. So- Y'all motherfuckers need to make that shit cheap for the poor, man. I just, I, it's like, god damn, by the time you have a PC that can run this shit well and everything, it's like, ugh. And the space you need to play, like... Uh, 
I don't VR know. is like a uh, VR is cool, but it's it's gonna be one yeah. of those things where I just like watch a playthrough. I feel like, <laughs> or like read up on what happens, or watch the cutscenes, or whatever you know. Because Lord knows I can't afford to play that. Hell no. So they did say uh, Valve did stress that Half Life Alex is a full fledged Half Life title. They actually said that the game's length is roughly in line with the length of Half Life Two. So, and I think Jeff Keighley even said that he played through the game in its entirety and it took him about 15 hours. That's solid. So it is a solid, like, long, full Half-Life game. It may not be Half-Life 3, but it's probably the closest we're going to get. And unfortunately, you're going to have to buy that expensive-ass VR unit to play it. Now, a, a caveat to that is if you do buy the Valve Index or if you already own the Valve Index, uh, they are giving away a copy of the game for free. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you already own an index, you're entitled to a copy of the game for free. And if you buy it, it will come with a code for the game, I guess. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Still too expensive, but... I kind of hope that they make, like, a PSVR version of it or something. Because that would probably sell me on a PSVR, I'm not going to lie. I still have a, I have a PSVR. I haven't fucking done anything with it. You would if that came out on it. Yeah, yeah. I probably would actually. <laughs> if they if they come out and say, "Hey, Todd, PSVR, Half Life Alex coming out on that," you'd play it. Shit. So, I've got a couple more bits of news here. Uh, did you see this? A series of patent images for the DualShock Five were leaked. Oh, oh shit! I did not see it. Did you see that? So where's this? Where's this at? You can probably just Google DualShock Five and it'll come up. So. This, this seemingly showcases the new design of the PS5's controller. Spoilers, looks a hell of a lot like the DualShock 4. <laughs> Which I told you all, you fucking morons who thought that we were going to get that stupid looking like boomerang controller that was like floating around. It seems like they're going back to the shorter l arms. Well, yeah, I mean, ish. It, it's, it, it seems shorter and fatter. It does seem a little bit fatter. It seems like the triggers oh, are no, going to no, be no. bigger. This is a this is a better image. This is a better image, though. Okay. But everybody saw those like fake ass images going around, and everybody was like, "Oh wow, the controller looks like shit." I'm like, "You guys, there's no way that shit is real." I mean, this essentially looks ex almost exactly. It's pretty much the same controller. <laughs> Very similar to the DualShock Four. Notably, though, they got rid of that stupid light bar. Yeah. Thank God the light for bar that. Is the light bar is unnecessary. They kept the touchpad, which I'm not surprised to see. I don't hate the touchpad. I never have. No, neither do I. It's essentially just a bigger button. The thing about it is, is because the uh, PS5 is going to be fully backwards compatible with the PS4, they have to have the touchpad because mm -hmm. there are certain games that use that. It's kind of it's kind of just confirmation of what I already knew. I already knew that this was not going to be a drastic departure. From the uh, the PS4 controller, but it's it's nice to see. It's it's just it's a nice little bit of confirmation bias there. So that's that. You excited to you excited for that to feel right in your hands? The DualShock Four, I think you've said, is your favorite controller, right? It is. So we'll see how the DualShock Five stacks up. I wonder oh, if they're gonna. Shit, no. I wonder if they're gonna do it how they did it with the DualShock Four, where. Actually, the DualShock 4 controller released like a month before the PS4 did. Yeah, I remember that. So I actually bought one before the PS4 came out just so I could already get a feel for the controller. And I played it. Like, you could hook it up to your PS3 and, and use it and play it. Mm -hmm. And I, I played Arkham Origins entirely with a PS4 controller on my PS3. And it worked, like, totally fine for the most part. It gave me no real issues and um, I wonder if they're going to do something similar with the DualShock 5, because I will totally buy one ahead of time if they do. Because I, I just want to put my hands on it, get used to it, <laughs> feel it up. Uh, Todd, last, uh, last thing on my news bracket here. This is the wrap-up. I've got the nominees for the 2019 Game Awards. Those have been revealed this week. So, of course, we'll be watching the Game Awards, as, as always. So there should be some exciting announcements. Should be some good cringy moments that we live for. Should be some good shit. What time is it at? Uh, that I actually don't know. It's usually evening time. So, 
in all, there are 29 total categories. Oh, 7.30 p.m. to 9.30, apparently. There you go. That works out. So, 29 categories this year for the 2019 Game Awards. These recognize everything from AAA games to indie games to soundtracks to art to esports to design and more. And I'll put a link of the full list of nominees in the episode description if you want to check that out. But I just kind of wanted to go over the nominees for the big one, the Game of the Year Award. So, nominated for Game of the Year 2019, we have Control by Remedy and 505 Games. We have Death Stranding by Kojima Productions and Sony Interactive Entertainment. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate by Bandai Namco, Sora Limited, and Nintendo. Which, by the way, Smash, some I can already hear you folks saying, but Smash came out last year. It was not included in last year's Game Awards because it came out after the deadline of, I believe it was December 1st. And I think Smash came out like December 8th or mm. something like that. So... That's why Smash is nominated this year. Uh, we've got Resident Evil 2 by Capcom. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice by From Software and Activision. And The Outer Worlds by Obsidian and Private Division. Hmm. So that is our nominees for Game of the Year this year at the 2019 Game Awards. Thoughts? I don't know. Who do you think's taking it this year? Give it to my boy, Kojima. If it's not Kojima, I will be so shocked. Not because I think Death Strand... I haven't played Death Stranding. Neither of us have. I want to. I absolutely will play that game eventually. Because I just want to know how I feel about it. One day I will play it. But Jeff Keighley and Kojima are just such, like, butt buddies. There, there's, there's no way, right? This is going to be, like, the Death Stranding show, basically. I feel like Death Stranding is going to be a clean sweep at this fucking show. And just also, if you look at the competition, Death Stranding really does kind of stand out. That's the that's like my like. As soon as you said it, I was like, uh, yeah. I mean, look, dude, it's been a weak year. I mean, like no, no, nothing. Like were you just doing all the not like all this, like just listing the nominees there. I'm just like, oof, oof. <laughs> I'm sitting here shocked. I mean, maybe their deadline for game releases was even like earlier this year because like I'm shocked that Fallen Order is not nominated. I'm shocked that, like, like yeah, Outer Worlds got in there and stuff like that, but, like, no Fallen Order? That's kind of surprising. Yeah. It's cool to see Control getting a little bit of love. It's, it's nice to see that, because I think that game had a really bad rap. A really good game that I do want to go back to. That, that game is really good, and, and a lot of people shat on that game because it had performance issues when it first came out, and they, like, immediately patched it, and everybody was already moved on by that point. But still a really good game that deserves more than it got. Resident Evil 2, I own that game. I have not played it. I hear it's a really, really great remake. Of course, Sekiro, we talked about that earlier. Todd doesn't like it. I have no opinion on it yet. I want to play it. Smash Ultimate is what I would pick personally out of all of these games because Smash Ultimate's a fantastic game. But also cool to see The Outer Worlds being nominated. It's cool to see The Outer Worlds get a little bit of love. I think Outer Worlds has kind of proven to be a little bit of a dark horse this year. I don't think anybody expected Outer Worlds to be as good as it is. Like, even me. Like, I was planning on passing on it. Fully. I want to go, I want to go, uh, I want to actually go back and play it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was fully planning on passing on that game. If it were not on Game Pass, I would not have played it. And I'm really glad I did. So, Yeah. Well, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on the Game Awards. I imagine, give you a little bit of a hashtag Seth was right prediction, I imagine that this is where we are going to get the announcement of the next Smash Fighter. And I think this is where we're going to get the announcement of Batman. I think both of those things are happening at the Game Awards this year. Mm, so. The Batman, yeah. For, I actually forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I think we're finally going to fucking finally get this Court of Owls Batman game. At this year's Game Awards. And I think we're going to hear about the next Smash Fighter. At this year's Game Awards. So take those to the bank Todd. The Game Awards will air on December 12th. You said that's at 7.30. Is that 7.30 Pacific? It's our time actually. Our time. Okay so 7.30 Central. Is when that starts. That would be 5.30 Pacific. So yeah. And I've got the link in the description. For all of the other nominees. If you want to check out the 28 other categories. 
But Todd, that's what I got this week. We got some. We got. Mm. We got through it. It was a lot of news, but yeah. we got there. A lot of Star Wars talk. A lot to be excited about in the world of video games right now. We've got. So I wanted to talk to you about this, and I'm gonna hash this out later on this week and talk to you privately in our little business meetings. But I do want to sit down and hash out the month of content for the month of December. Get with you on that because if we haven't already said this in the past, we are doing another Nerd mm-hmm. Bourbon Holiday Gift Exchange. So your gifts are already ready, boy. I got one more coming in from you, and then and once that comes in, the uh, the others are already wrapped and in their box. I'm just waiting patiently for the last one to arrive, and as soon as it does, it will be on its way to you. Beautiful. And then we will, at some point in December, record that episode of Nerd Bourbon, the the annual holiday gift exchange, which is now a tradition, I guess. Well, fuck it. And then, of course, we're going to do our Game of the Year discussions. We're going to do our most anticipated, like we do every year. So we'll, we'll get in touch about all of that. Let you guys know when that stuff's happening, once we figure it out. Next week, we'll be talking a lot about Pokemon. We will give Pokemon its time in the limelight. Uh, cover news as we always do we will see what happens in terms of that but Todd that's all I got anything else you want to add before we wrap it up I think that's about it man alright folks we'll catch you next week get fucking dunked on bye see ya hey there thanks for checking out another fantastic nerd bourbon video if you like what you saw and you want to see more be sure to go ahead and subscribe leave us a like drop us a nice comment or I guess a, a mean one if that's if that's your prerogative, but uh, until next time, get dunked on.